Hey guys, did you know that I have a Patreon where you can support me and plus get awesome rewards? Or if you're thinking to yourself, but Julian, I want even more bang for my buck while still supporting you, you can pop over to my Redbubble and check out my awesome store with new designs appearing regularly. But for now, enjoy the video you're about to watch. Hey guys, it's me, Julian Greystoke. Today I'm wearing my Slytherin shirt. You all know what that means. Today we are going to talk about a book that I was actually really looking forward to reading because I liked the other book that I read by this author. It was just exactly my type of cheese. Mm, so good so processed. So the other book that I read was Cruel Beauty, links in the doobly-doo to a review for that, but the book that I'm talking about today is Crimson Bound. They are similar in that they're sort of fairy tale retellings, but otherwise they aren't like in the same universe or anything like that. So Crimson Bound is about a young girl who goes into a deadly magical forest, and you guys all know I am on board for deadly magical forests. And while she's there, she manages to draw the attention of this creature called a forestborn, who makes her like a servant of the forest. A bloodbound, which is similar to being a grey warden. You have the ability to sort of sense forest creatures and you can kill them and she's a total badass, but eventually the forest will call you back and you must go. Also, to become one of these you have to kill someone. And we pick up with our heroine again where she is being given an assignment to guard a special prince guy who has no hands, which is very cool. He had his hands chopped off and he wears prosthetic hands. Really liked that element. But she's chosen to guard him and she hates him, of course. The force is coming in and they have to forge a magical sword to try to defeat the forest, essentially. And let me just say that at first I was on board. I was like, well damn. They're essentially Grey Wardens and she's a kick-ass girl and she's hanging out with her partner is like this foppish over-the-top guy, which is an archetype that I secretly really love. It was meaty. It was a meaty beginning and I was on board. I also enjoyed the ending of this book. It was a little confusing. We'll say that, but it was a fun ride. It's the middle of this book where we run into some major, major flaws that really just dragged it down for me. So I wanted to like this book so much. The middle of this book was all over the place. It's like the author didn't know what she wanted this book to be. I know what it turned out to be, and that's a hot mess. Was it trying to be a romance, a book about courtly politics? A mystery, a swashbuckling swords and sword fighting adventure, it wanted to be all of these things. And yeah, a book can be all of those things, but this one, it would start to dip its toe into one of these things and then immediately back off. So it kept just trying to be things and failing, and it was very frustrating because I would just start to get into, say, the courtly politics, or I would just start to get into the swords and swashbuckling, and it would stop and be something else. The main character... I I thought she was okay. She was pretty much a blank slate. She was kind of a badass, bit of a crabby pants, but she was a little bit all over the place as well because the forest kept like coming into her psyche, but it was really hard to tell when she was being an asshole because she was just an asshole and when she was being an asshole because the forest had like taken control of her a little bit. The romance in this was also kind of odd. It definitely had a theme of physical attraction versus intellectual attraction, which was cool. She's very physically attracted to one romantic interest and their relationship is a lot more physical about sex and stuff like that, while the other one has a lot more of an intellectual attraction. And I liked that, I just wish it had been done better, especially since her assholishness comes out a lot more with the guy she's intellectually attracted to, and it's frustrating. And I, I did love, my favorite character was the prince who had his hands chopped off and used these metal prosthetic hands. He is my precious baby and no harm must come to him. I wanted to push the main character out of the way and be his bodyguard myself because he was a darling. The other romantic interest, I mean it comes up pretty early, is her partner who is a sort of over-the-top, rakish, foppish guy, which is an archetype that I love, but I was really disappointed the direction that they took his character in. This book claims that it is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood, but that fairy tale connection is super tenuous. A girl meets something in the forest. That is the extent of the Little Red Riding Hood that we have here. But 
the Hansel and Gretel. Like, I don't know why people aren't catching this Hansel and Gretel thing, because in this world they had this mythology of two great heroes, a brother and a sister, who defeated this creature called, like, Mother Hunger or something like that. And they are like the legendary heroes and they have to reforge their sword. And it was so Hansel and Gretel and I was like, why is this book being marketed as a Red Riding Hood retelling when the Hansel and Gretel themes are so freaking strong? There's also a female friendship in this book, but it was really frustrating because the other female character tags along with our heroine and she completely exists just to help our heroine look pretty and encourage our heroine along. This other girl has no personality in and of herself. In fact, she was such a non-character that reading back my notes, I didn't even remember that she existed until I read the note about her. She deserved better, whatever her name was that I forgot because she was a non-character. Something that really, really did bother me, and this is a little bit of a spoiler, everyone who encounters a forestborn has the choice to either kill someone or die themselves within like three days. Those are your options, people. And if you kill someone, then you can go on to live your sort of Grey Warden life until the forest comes for you. And she killed her beloved, like, teacher, I think she was also her her aunt or her grandmother or something like that. And I was like, oh, I love that. That's that's great because it shows that the pull of the force is so strong and our main character has a flaw. She killed this person that she loved because the force pull was so strong and she wanted to save her own life. And then we fucking find out that it was a mercy killing. She came home to find this forest creature torturing her beloved mentor, and so she killed her mentor because she was suffering and would have died anyway. And that choice infuriated me. Why are authors always doing this? Urgh, I don't even have words for how furious I am with this choice. But if you are writing a book and you are thinking of giving your character some big backstory or some big flaw like that, don't then take it away and make them an honorable hero in every way. Leave them with that, please, I beg of you. So overall, I definitely will never be rereading this book. I would definitely reread the other book by this author before I reread this one. But what did you guys think? Did you read Crimson Bound? Comment below and let me know what you thought of it. And what are some of your favorite fairy tale retellings? Leave me comments below because I want to read more. I want to do a video someday about my favorite fairy tale retellings because I'm writing one. It's called Boots and it is a Puss in Boots retelling. But I need to read more. I need to read more and find more that I love. So make suggestions below. Everyone remember that I post new videos here Mondays and Fridays. All the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo, so go click on all that stuff if you like. And remember, if you like what you see, but you'd like to see it be higher quality, you can support me on Patreon. All the money from my Patreon goes towards buying me a new camera that's not 10 years old. Cause yikes. And I will see all of you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! What's up everybody? It is shout out time! Time to shout out to my very first patron, Kim! And if you want to be cool like Kim, become a patron over on Patreon.